Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Pathfinder. I'm up here at camp for about a week, and I thought I would take advantage of this opportunity to evaluate a few new knives that I purchased recently. Um, this one is a now obviously discontinued model from Ontario Knives. As most of you will already no doubt know, Ontario Knife Company is no more. Well, at least not in its original incarnation. It's been purchased, production's being moved somewhere down south, but they're not gonna be making knives in New York anymore. But there's a bunch of now discontinued models that are still available at very good clearance prices. And I took the opportunity to buy a few of them. So we've already taken a look at the Ontario Spec Plus Alpha Combat. The second knife we're gonna take a look at is this which is the Ontario Ranger series NS4. Ranger originally started as its own knife company owned by Justin Gingrich. Uh, Gingrich, I think, is a former Army Ranger and he started Ranger Knives. So this thing is just an absolute beast. I mean, a severe duty knife like almost nothing I've ever seen before. All of the Ranger Knives were made out of quarter inch thick stock. You can see how thick the spine is, how thick the blade is in between the handle scales. It's made from 5160, which is spring steel, and heat treated relatively soft. So this basically has a spring temper on it. Not great for edge retention, but very, very good for toughness. This is a knife that would be, I think, very difficult to break. As you can see, this has a recurved edge. I don't really mind recurved edges. A lot of people shy away from them because of their, their being relatively difficult to sharpen. Uh, I don't find that they're that difficult to sharpen if you have the right tools. I have a diamond impregnated sharpening rod at home. It's a really massive knife, quite heavy. I think I weighed just the knife on my scale and it was a little bit more than a pound. So. Uh, it's not a lightweight knife, probably not something you're going to want to take backpacking, but very, very tough. And it should be quite capable of achieving any uh, work that you have to do around the camp. It does have a full flat grind. We've got a recurved edge here, and it does start out at a quarter of an inch thick. But the full flat grind means that you end up with it being fairly thin behind the edge. I actually used this to do a little bit of uh, chopping an onion this afternoon, and it did a pretty good job slicing. Uh, obviously, this isn't a kitchen knife, but it's not meant to be a kitchen knife. Um, this is going to be a chopper. Relatively small. It's only got about a four and a half inch cutting edge, although I think the overall length of the blade is nearly six inches. Very, very heavy laminated wood scales held in place with Corby bolts and a massive hammer surface on the bottom of the pommel and a very wide lanyard hole. You could, I have a piece of uh, paracord tied through here, but this could take a fairly heavy strap this knife just has the feel of indestructibility. The wooden handle scales were extremely blocky when I first got the knife. There's still, it's still quite rectangular in cross section, but I did reprofile these quite a bit. I started out with a rasp and then sanded the contours and it's much, much nicer in the hand right now. Although it is quite blocky, there's no real obvious hot spots. You've got some really heavy duty jimping on the back of the blade here and quite a large finger choil for you to choke up on. You do have to be careful though because the back cut is way down here. The cutting edge comes right to the edge of the finger choil there. So you do have to be uh, careful of where you put your finger there lest you get sliced. But you should be able to choke up on this fairly well and do some close work in this recurved section. This should be great for feather sticking and things like that. I think the idea behind these knives when Ontario acquired Ranger from Justin Gingrich, who now owns 511, um, was to make a slab handled full tang knife that was more soldier proof than their rat knives. And this is definitely that. 
most of Ontario's knives were made from either 1075 or 1095, both of which are very good steels. But 5160 is just about indestructible. I don't have a very fine edge on this. I left it fairly toothy. The sheath is also quite nice. Just quickly, we've got Molly attachments on the back here. There's a pouch in the front, which could hold, I don't know, some fire starting gear, maybe a multi-tool, maybe a folding knife. That would work in there. We've got double snap closure retention straps. So I guess that makes this thing jump ready. I'm not sure about that. Uh, because I don't jump out of airplanes. But it's my understanding that double retention is what qualifies something as jump ready. And we've got a hard plastic liner inside the sheath. The sheath looks like it's fairly good quality and should hold up well. It's actually of similar construction, but much nicer than, say, for instance, the nylon sheath on my Becker BK9. I think this is perfectly acceptable for field use. Anyway, I think I've talked enough. Let's go out and uh, wail on this thing a little bit and see how it holds up. So it's been a few days and I've had a couple of sessions outdoors with the Ontario Ranger NS4. And all I can say is that this thing is a beast of a knife. Considering its overall short length, it's still capable of doing some really, really heavy duty tasks. This quarter inch blade adds a significant amount of heft, maybe too much heft. This is definitely not a knife I would want to take backpacking, for instance. But if I was on a vehicle trip in the wilderness or a canoe trip in the wilderness, someplace where I didn't have to carry all of my gear all the time, this would be a pretty good knife for the broad range of survival uses. The full flat grind means that it cuts fairly well. It even slices fairly well. I think, again, I cut up an onion with it the other day. When we were outdoors, I started off doing some batoning, and I was working with, with some firewood that we've had around camp for a while. It's very well seasoned, extremely hard white birch, which is the predominant sort of deciduous tree we have around here. And this powered through fairly well. The big problem, of course, is the rel relatively short blade. I think the overall length of this is only five inches or maybe a little bit more. So I was really breaking up kindling. It, this is not the same as my Becker BK9. You're not going to split a log in half with this, but it does well enough at batoning and this powder coat finish that's on here has held up fairly well. There's a couple of spots where it's wearing through, but there wasn't a lot of wood transfer, which means that the friction isn't super high. I mean, after I use this knife for a few years, it's probably going to have zero finish left on it, but I do appreciate a decent initial finish anyway to help inhibit corrosion. Again, this is 5160, which is extremely tough, but it's not particularly rust resistant. So once all this finish is gone, I'm going to have to keep this clean and dry. I'm not a person who oils knives a lot. I just don't really care much for carrying around an oily knife and it attracts all kinds of dust and dirt. Stuff sticks to the blade. Really with most carbon steel blades, as long as you keep them clean, and dry and when they do get wet make sure they're dry before you and don't store them in a wet sheath most of your knives are going to hold up fine they'll get some surface rust they'll get a little bit of patina but i actually think that kind of looks good on a i like the look of a well-used knife so it worked okay for batoning but again it's just too small to do any serious batoning as far as chopping goes i do have a, a pinky lanyard on here which may be a little bit too loose and I was able to do some chopping. Now it does have a fair amount of heft to it, but with this very short blade and the small diameter of the arc that the blade is traveling through, you really don't get a lot of chopping power out of this. If you look at this with the recurved edge, it's actually almost like a little kukri knife. And I imagined when I first got the knife that I might be able to do some serious chopping with it. You can cut kindling to length, but it's not you're not going to chop down a tree with this. You probably could if you had to. You can certainly baton your way through something larger, but it's not really made for chopping. Now, having said that, if you had this in a survival situation, could you get by with it? Oh, certainly. 
Um, I tried doing a little bit of feather sticking. As is usually the case with Ontario knives, this had a very, very steep uh, secondary grind on it when I first got it. And I did put this on my slack belt grinder and reprofiled the edge a little bit, but it's still awfully steep. You can certainly raise some curls off of a piece of wood. You can make shavings with which to start a fire, but you're not gonna make beautiful feather sticks using this knife. And lastly, I did a little bit of testing, which I don't normally do. I don't usually subscribe to the idea of snap out testing because you really run the risk of snapping the tip off of your knife. And I'm not entirely convinced that that type of testing has any real value or, or translates at all into the real world. But this blade is so beefy and so massive and the tip is so massive, I figured, why not? Let's give it a try. So I drove this into a stump and admittedly kind of waterlogged and rotten stump but I drove it pretty deeply into the wood a couple of times and snapped the blade out sideways. And of course, as you can see, this tip wasn't going anywhere. Um, again, I'm not really sure that snap out tests translate to actual survival use, but they are fun to do. And this knife certainly held up to that. These laminated wooden handle scales are still fairly blocky, but the knife is comfortable in the hand. There aren't any really obvious hot spots. I think I could work with this knife all day without developing any blisters, or at least for a few hours. Yeah, I could spend some more time contouring these handle scales down a little bit, but I don't really feel the need for that. Actually, as I get older and develop more arthritis in my hands, I find a nice fat grip easier to work with, easier to hold on to and I think this knife is perfectly fine just the way it is. So it's a very heavy duty knife. The final edge could probably use to be recontoured a little bit more, but this isn't a straight razor. This is a heavy duty knife for doing heavy duty tasks and I think it, it suits those purposes very well. This sheath, I know a lot of people don't like these, but I think it's perfectly fine. This is a great rig. I guess that's really all I have to say for the Ontario Ranger NS4. You'll probably see it again. I think this is going to be one of my go-to heavy-duty knives, probably live in my truck. So I guess I'll move on to the next one, and when I post that up, I hope to see each of you here then. Later, guys!